Hello and welcome to this session in which we will go over this CPA exam simulation. This simulation, I would say it's one of the most challenging simulations for several reasons. The first one is this simulation. Indeed, it simulate the real world. So it simulate a situation, a scenario that you as an entry level CPA staff, you might see in the real world Two, There's a lot of exhibits, which it's not really that intimidating because usually each exhibit you'll have, you can get an answer from each exhibit. Sometimes you might have to look at more than one exhibit, which this, this simulation will, will involve. Also, you're going to have many adjustments and these adjustments, they are all interrelated. So if you mess up one adjustments, it's going to mess up the others. So that's why I believe it's a challenging. So it's one of those, the mother of all simulations. Nevertheless, it's difficult. I'm going to show you how you would approach a simulation like this on the exam day. So I would say this is challenging. I agree. Like if you said I got this simulation, I was under time pressure. It's challenging. I would say, yes, I agree. This is challenging, but this could be more challenging. For example, in this simulation, they don't ask you about the journal entries. So they're going to be asking you about adjustments and we should all know adjustments, which is basically how to prepare adjusting entries. In other words, adjusting entries is fixing the account. Just the, the number is not correct. Make sure it's the correct number. So let's go back and review our basic steps. First, as you take a look at it, it's basically I have to do some computation. It looks like adjustments. Now, what type of adjustments? I don't know. I'm going to have to look at each adjustment separately. It looks like I need to adjust my revenues, cost of sales, general and administrative expenses, research and development costs, sales and marketing expense, gain, interest expense. They might be correct. They may not be correct, so on and so forth. What you do next is you, okay, so it's an adjustment. Don't open the exhibits yet. There's a lot of exhibits. Just see what they are. I have a summary of year five result. I have a debt agreement memorandum. I have an email uh, regarding Pine Corporation sales contract. I have an interest expense, a general ledger. I have research and development expense, account activity, and I have additional information. I have a lot and I have analytics definition if need be. Let's go ahead and get started in how you would solve this simulation. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. First, let's read it and see what we are being told to do. Now we have a, we have a general idea, but now we have to be specific and you have to be doing those real quick. In the first two minutes, you will do what you need to do. What type of a simulation is it? What am I being asked to do? So we have Oak Corporation is preparing its financial statement as of year end December 31st, year five. Review the above exhibits, don't review anything yet, to identify any adjustments required to the draft income statement for the year ended December 31st. So now I know exactly what is the simulation about. I have an income statement, they're giving me figures, and they're telling me, is this figure correct based on what we are told? To adjust the draft income statement, enter amount associated in column C, enter increases to revenue and expenses as positive, so increases are positive, and decreases to revenues and expenses as negative. Enter decreases to gain as positive. You have to be careful. If it's a gain, you have to decrease as positive and increases to gain as negative. So when you have gains, you have to be careful how we're dealing with this. If no adjustments is needed, uh, then leave the associate column C blank. If multiple adjustment affect a single financial statement line, then enter the net amount in column C. There's more than one adjustments, you net them out. Adjustment might not be required in some rows within the draft income statement and amount in column D will calculate automatically. Thank you very much. It means I don't have to worry about making a computational error. Now I'm ready to start the simulation. The first questions I am being asked is revenue. Here's what you are told. This is the drafted amount. This is what we think revenue is right now. 57 million 495 my our question to you is this does this number need adjustments 
or is this number correct adjusted at 57 million 495 how do you know whether it need adjustment or not now you go to the exhibit now when you go to the exhibit you have one two three four five six with the analytics seven exhibits the first thing you want to do is predict which exhibit am i am i gonna go to predict which one should you go to the debt agreement i will not open this one yet i will not open my interest expense yet i will not open research and development expense yet i will not i might I, definitely you'll always want to open the additional the additional information but i will definitely open email regarding pine corporation sales contract i really want to look at this because this is a sales contract and sales deals with revenue so i'm just walking you through my logic summary of year five result for segment b i would also look at this i'm not it may not be related but because it's a summary of results they might have some revenue information so let me take a look at this one first i'm going to take a look at this exhibit so this is for segment b we have revenues expenses transaction fee for disposal it means we dispose this segment so this is what we know about this segment now it was disposed pre-tax income income tax expense and net income I don't think this is helpful for my revenue, okay? But I know this, now I know that segment B was disposed of. Let me take a look at email regarding Pine Corporation sales contract. So it's basically an email. From the senior accountant at Oak Company to the controller at Oak Company. I spoke to the manager of the shipping department today and was told that the department shipped 20,000 product on December 31st, year five. We received confirmation from the common carrier that Pine received all 20,000 on January 2nd, year six. That's great. Based on this information and the email below, I recorded the following journal entry. Account receivable, 400, I debited account receivable, credited sales, debited cost of goods, sold credited inventory. This is what the controller says. Now from the con controller back to the senior accountant. While working on the year end close, please consider the following new customer contract detail. Oak enter into a contract with a new customer to produce and deliver 20,000 product for Pine. Yes, we did deliver those. The transaction price will be 450, which is, this is exactly what we recorded. The shipping terms are FOB destination. This is the key to this answer. Now, if you don't know what FOB destination is, so this whole email, this whole intimidated section relies whether you know what's FOB destination versus FOB shipping. So if this sale was FOB destination, destination means you don't record the sale until the customer received the product. In other words, when it when when this sale is in transit, the company did not did not did not complete the sale yet. So here's what we did: we shipped December fifth, year five. The customer received it January second, year six. What does that mean? It means this entry here belongs to year six, does not belong to year five. What does that mean? It means I have to take out of revenue 450,000. I just know this. I have to take out of revenue 450,000. And obviously, we're going to see later, obviously, you're going to have to take out of account receivable 450,000 as well. And also, and if you notice here, since I have this one open, if you look at cost, also we have to take out of cost because we also recorded the related cost, 350,000. So simply put, we just find out the first two adjustments, which is all based on your understanding of what? Your understanding of, at FOB shipping, FOB destination. I will not do it yet. I wanna look at additional information just to make sure I did not, I did not miss something. The following provides information for Oak, the secured overnight financing rate, uh, effective tax rate, uh, I'm just reading, reading this real quick. This is on October 26, Oak sold segment B, okay? A major line of business that presents strategic shift in the company's operation and um, and recognize a pre-tax gain of 300,000. Project A relates to the development of new product that Oak expect to launch in the second. Nothing that about this revenue and cost. Now, I didn't, look, I didn't even open the other exhibits. If you wanna open them, like that interest research to feel better, but I think I will go with reducing my revenue by 450. Said so if you reduce means negative for revenues and expenses and reducing my cost by 350. And what I just did, I just finished the first two adjustments. It, again, I'm gonna repeat myself one more time. It all depends on one thing only and that's your understanding of FOB shipping. Now also I reduced my, in, uh, I increased my inventory. 
Why am I mentioning this? Because at the end, I'm going to have to compute return on sales. And I'm just going to tell you what the how we computed this. So remember, I, I, I reduced my inventory, I'm going to go back and increase my inventory by 350 when the invent when when I make the adjustment. Okay, so the, so basically, from a journal entry, as I told you, they did not ask you to, to prepare the journal entries, we'll have to reverse this entry. So we'll debit revenue, credit account receivable, and by debiting revenue, we reduce revenue, we reduce account receivable, and we increase inventory and cre credit reduce cost of goods sold. Now we are done with this. Good. That's really good. We have general administrative expenses. The number is $6,814,500. And we are being asked, is this a correct amount? And if not, what should be the journal entry? Should we add more expenses? Should we reduce expenses? That's what we are being told to do. Okay. So uh, I don't see the general ledger for general and administrative expenses. Well, uh, for now, if I'm looking at this, I really don't know what to do because I don't see anything about general and administrative. I see research and development. So what I'm going to I'm going to switch to research and development, and it says two million three hundred and four thousand. Now, why, why am I doing this? Because if I'm if, if I'm going to try to tell you what, what should you look for, I don't know what you should look for for the general administrative expenses. Let's take a look at the research and development expense because it's given at $2,304,000. So I'm going to look at the detail of the general ledger. I'm going to go over this. They're giving me a figure. They're, they're giving me a figure and they're telling me this is what we have. And this figure should match. The first thing you want to know is this is why this is important for the real world. Notice the closing balance for this general ledger research and development expense activity so this is the r d expense activity well it shows two million three hundred and four we're going to go back here on the income statement it should match two million three hundred and four now there must be there could be something wrong here because they're telling me they're asking me to look into it so i'm gonna you're gonna have to look into each account separately now to find out if there's anything unusual engineering costs to develop specification for prototype project a well, yeah, this is this sounds like uh, research and development cost. Material consumed to develop prototype A. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. We're we're, we're looking at pro project A because they told us something in the additional information about product A. Market research to evaluate potential sales price. Okay, let's stop right here. What do we know about R and D? Do we include market research? Well, R and D is not included in market research. What does that mean? It means this 215,000 should not belong here. Why? Because market research is not research and development. Market research is basically, it's market. It's a marketing expense. Therefore, I know from this amount, I have to take out 215,000. Why? Because it doesn't belong there. It's not research and development. Third party contract services provided to test prototype A. This sounds like research and development on product A. Recognition of year five, Salaries for R&D personnel. Yes, R&D, research and development salaries are research and development. Recognition of year five corporate accounting and salaries and finance salaries. Hold on a second. I have 183,000 included with these expenses that are, these, this sounds like a general and administrative expenses. Hold on a second. So what do I need to do? Here I have two reclassification to make. I need to take out the 215,000 out of the market uh, market research because this is not research it's basically marketing cost and i have to take out 183000 out of corporate accounting and it doesn't belong there it doesn't belong there that belong in research and development S simply put the 183000 belongs to general and administrative so i have to do what i have to add 183000 in this column because i have to now i figure it out because look if you were trying to do your general administrative and looking at the statements, you would be you would you would have been spinning your wheels. So just I, I moved to research and development because I had the gen the general ledger for it. Now I know sales and marketing. Also, I need to add to this the two hundred and fifteen thousand. I need to I need to add to this two hundred and fifteen. So what I did is I took them out from where? I took them out from research and development. It means I have to reduce research and development by the total, which is if I add them up, they add up to 398,000. And simply put, this is called a reclassification entry. Reclassification means I'm going to be 
Debiting, salaries and marketing expense, debiting general and administrative expense, and crediting research and development expense. So the expenses were in the wrong place. Not a big deal at all. Like this is a simple, like if I gave you this in a, this will be too easy for a multiple choice. Why is this challenging? Because you have to look for it. But if you know what you are looking for, it's not difficult at all. So it's easy. But it's it it will be too too easy if I put this question in a multiple choice. <laughs> I hope this makes sense. Now, gain on disposal, gain on disposal, I had a gain on disposal, 300,000. What that? What did I dispose of, gain on disposal? Well, if you look, you remember when, we, when, we looked, when I looked at summary year five, segment B, I was told that I disposed of this segment. Okay, that's fine. I disposed of this segment, that's, that's great. But I was told under the additional information, if you look at the additional information, I was told under the additional information or somewhere that actually under the additional information that the segment represent a major strategic shift in the company's operation. What does that mean? This is a discontinued operation. When you see the word major strategic shift, a strategic shift in the company's operation, it means I'm not dealing with the gain with the sale of an asset. I'm, I'm dealing with the disposal of a of a whole segment okay so this is so this 300,000 should not be there it should be under discontinued operation and I do have discontinued operation here if you notice here in column in, in, in this row row 17 I have a gain on discontinued operation again what does that mean it means this gain should not be here so if this gain should not be here what do I need to do I need to take it out of here because it's a gain, it's a negative, I have to offset it with a positive. So I have to take the gain out. Why? Because it's not a sale of a division. I did not sell a division. I did not sell a division. I dispose of a whole segment. So it has to be under discontinued operation. So if I added 300,000, what do I have to do? The gain has to go somewhere else. The gain has to go under discontinued operation. And remember, this discontinued operation, the gain has to be put as negative. So what I just did, I also did another reclassification entry. What is the reclassification entry? Debiting this gain, basically I debited the gain here and I credited discontinued operation, the gain here, the gain, uh, the gain on discontinued operation, the gain on discontinued operation. So I'm, I'm done with that. Let's see what else do I have left. Now I'm gonna be looking at interest expense. The interest expense you are giving is 356,250. And the question is, is this number correct? Now, how do I know whether this number correct or not? Well, now I'm gonna go to my interest general ledger detail and it should show 356,250 because it should match. 356,250, 356,250. Okay, great. Now you examine, when you have it, those general ledger, you examine, how did we come up with this figure? We have a semi-interest payment of 187,500 then another semi interest accrual payment of 168,750 this is what we have as a result we have total interest expense of 356,250 now the question is do you think this is correct or incorrect if it's correct you don't do anything how do you know whether this amount is correct or not well first i need to take a look at my debt agreement because i need to know what debt do i have and how did they come up with this Computation. How did they come up with this computation? Well, let's take a look. The following summarizes the key terms of the debt agreement entered by Oak and the National Bank. The agreement, we borrowed $10 million, semi-annual principal payment of a million beginning on July 1st, year five. That's, that's the deal of July 1st, year five. Variable interest, so it's not a fixed interest. The variable interest is the secure overnight rate as quoted at the beginning of each of each semi-annual period plus 2.5. So what's your interest rate? Your interest rate is the SOFR, which is, it's a variable, S-O-F-R, plus 2.5. This is how much interest you will need to record every six months. Principal and interest payment are due July 1st, maturity January 1st. National Bank Oak is, is the first and only lender. So that's the only debt we are dealing with. Simply put, we have a $10 million debt 
uh, we made the principal payment July 1st. So basically we have to now we what we have to do is we have to see if they computed the interest expense correctly. Well to compute the interest expense we have to know the interest rate. Well we are told it's SOFR plus 2.5. And notice in this exhibit in this question I'm looking at more than one exhibit. So notice that's why I said this is a challenging one because I have to look at more than one exhibit. So I'm going to have to go to the additional information. So I know the loan amount is 10 million. Uh, I know how they came up with the interest expense. Now I need to take a look at the additional information and under additional information, I see that from the SOFR was 1.25 January 1st and it changed July 1st to 1.5. So what's my interest rate for the first six months? My interest rate for the first six months is 1.25 plus 2.5. That's how, that's what the deal is. So what do I do as, what do I do at this point? I would say, okay, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to have a 10 million. I start with a 10 million, with a $10 million loan. And I'm going to multiply this by, what did we say? We say, um, let me see, let me move this. 1.25 plus 1.25 plus 2.5. So the interest rate, the first six months is 3.75. So I'm going to take $10 million. You would use your calculator and multiply it by 0 0.0375. That's the rate for the whole year, 375,000. Then this is only for six months. I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.5. And for the first six months, my interest expense is 187,500. Now, what do you do? Go to the interest expense uh, general ledger to see if indeed they computed this amount correctly. Let's go back to the interest expense general ledger. And notice here they computed the interest expense correctly, $187,000, $187,500. So notice the first six months, we see it's correct. Now we need to compute the remaining six months the remaining six months. Okay, how do we compute the remaining six months? Remember, after after the first six months, we paid down a million dollars. Now we need to know what was the SOFA rate. SOFA rate was 1.5. It means for the remaining, the next six months, the rate was 1.5 plus 2.5, which is 4%. So let's go back now and compute our debt. So the, the next six months, we are at $4 million dollars. And the interest rate is 4%, which is 1.5 the SOFR plus 2.5. That's the deal. So we're paying 4%. So I'm going to take 9 million times 4%, and this should be 360,000. This is for the whole year, times 0 0.5 for half a year. So if I take 360,000 times 0 0.5, the interest expense for the next 12 month, it should be six month, it should be 180,000. Well, let's see. Is it 180,000? Let's see my interest expense. My interest expense here, they computed it as 168,750. So what's the difference? 168,750. The, the difference is 11,250. What does that mean? It means this number is not correct. I computed the first six months correct. The second six months, it was incorrect. I have to increase my interest expense. The difference is 11,250. The difference between 168,750 and what I computed 180. Okay, good. But notice here, I, I have to agree. I have to agree. Like this, this the reason it's challenging. Again, if I give you this in a multiple choice, tell you compute the interest expense. It's very easy. But when you have to look in the debt agreement, then you have to look in the additional information, then do the computation and compare to the interest expense general ledger. This is where it takes time. And this is where your knowledge. So notice here, in a multiple choice to compute this interest expense fixed entry, I would say it's easy. To do it here, you have to know where to look for the information. So I have to increase my interest expense by 11,250. And I just fixed my interest expense. I just fixed my interest expense. Now what I have to do, I have to compute my income tax, either income tax expense or income tax benefit. What do I do? I just have to adjust the number right now is 339,050. And when it comes to income tax expense, I have to know my tax rate. And I believe under the additional information, I was told the effective tax rate is 20%. So I know the effective tax rate is 20%. 
So what I have to do, I have to take a look at all the adjustments that I made and just basically c computed them. Or since this is a great thing, they computed all of this for you. They computed the, the change for 11,250. And what do I have to do? I have to multiply this by 20% because I have to adjust because this number is based on income from continuing operation of 1,695,250 multiplied by 20%, you get this. If you made additional adjustments for 11,250, what do you have to do? You have multiplied by 0.20 and you have to put it as negative 82,250. And I just fixed my income tax expense, which is 256,800, okay? Now let's take a look at income gain on discontinued operation. The gain on discontinued operation, we, oh, sorry, I put the gain on discontinued operation in the wrong place. It's $300,000 here, the gain on discontinued operation, sorry. So, okay, the gain on discontinued operation has to be 300,000, okay? Now, what do we need to know about discontinued operation? Remember, we have a gain, and how do we report the gain on discontinued operation? We always report the gain on discontinued operation net of tax because we have a gain of 300,000 we have to pay 20% tax again the losses are also reported net of tax so again this is another concept separate concept that you need to know for this simulation so if I have a gain of 300,000 I have to pay 20% taxes on it my taxes it's going to go up by 60,000 my taxes will go up by 60,000. So the income tax expense on this will have to go up by 60,000. 60,000. 60,000. And now my net my net profit from this from this discontinued operation is again the gain is negative. This is a gain. Again, you have to be careful in this simulation because you have to be careful about the pluses and the minuses. So the gain is 300,000. The gain is 300,000. Then I have to pay 60,000 in taxes. The net gain is 240. The net gain is 240 because I, have to, I had to pay taxes on this. And then the computed net income is 89,000. Is 89,000. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not the, the adjustment, overall the adjustment is 89,000. I have to reduce it. Overall, it's 1,311,200. This is the new net income the new net income so notice i had i had i had to go through several adjustments let's review them real quick and i've just kind of put everything under control i would say revenues and expenses were pretty straightforward the reclassification expenses as long as you know how to read the general ledger just you know how, you know certain things don't belong in the r d you reclassify them not bad gain on disposal as long as you understand that s selling uh, segment B was discontinued operation. You need to take this one out and put it with the gain on discontinued operation and you have to be reported net of tax. So far, so good. Interest expense, I would say, was a little bit like uh, we had to be careful with interest expense. It was a little bit like you have to look at three different places. So that's fine. Uh, income tax benefit was the result. If you get all of them right, you will get this right. And the rest is that's it. So if just the reason I'm summarizing this is to make sure you you don't got you don't get overwhelmed. Again, on the, it's easier said than done on the exam day. Of course, it's gonna be you're gonna be under more pressure. But the point is is to be prepared and stay calm under pressure. That's the whole. That's the reason I'm going over this to tell you that if you know where to look, it's easy. If you know where to look, it's easy. Now I'm gonna they're giving us the balance sheet for year four, year five, the balance sheet for year four. Uh, they're asking us what's the net effect of adjustments well what's the net if you remember i told you the net effect on the assets we are going to do what uh, we are going to uh, remove remove the account receivable and increase the inventory removing the account receivable was 450 adding the inventory was 350 so the net is a reduction of a hundred thousand from the asset side so this is going to be the adjustment to the assets the net adjustments the rest, the rest were affecting the expenses reclassification. Then the liabilities. Remember, we had to increase expense adjustment. We had to increase in interest expense adjustment, which is, again, what do you do? You debit expense, you credit a liability. Also, we had an adjustment for income tax expense. Our income tax expense 
again, income tax expense, income tax liability, income tax expense was a reduction. Okay, so notice here, you have to understand the, uh, the effect, okay? So this is, so expenses went down, um, expenses, I'm sorry, expenses went up, with the interest expense and remember the, you have to you have to understand the corresponding credit or debit when you're dealing with expenses the corresponding debit or credit is a liability so here income tax expense went up liabilities went up here income tax expense went down liabilities went down so you have to be netting those liabilities liability up 11,000 liability down 82,250 then here we also had an income tax expense for the discontinued operation again if income tax expense went up it means a liability went up so we have two liabilities up one liability is down we net them if we net them it will be 11,000 so negative 11,000 on the liabilities this is the effect on the liability give me one second here oh, let me close this so if you net them it's negative 11,000 and this is the effect on the liability so now we have the adjusted the adjusted assets the adjusted liabilities here they're asking us to compute return on asset notice this is a long 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 uh long uh simulation i would take a look at my analytics definition it should be they should be uh return on asset i'll just take a look at it and see what you know what their uh, what formulas they're using just because since we are this since this is given to you you want to take a look at it return on asset is net income which we already computed net income and hopefully we computed net income correctly divided by average total asset now you have to be careful you have to use the average total asset what is the average total asset well the average total asset is year four plus year five because the two years two years let me go back to the uh, two years because they're giving us year four and year five the average of the two years so year four plus year five divided by two year four plus uh, asset that's only we're looking at assets year four plus year five divided by two and net income is net income which is one million three hundred eleven thousand two hundred so if you take one million three hundred eleven thousand two hundred divided by and if you find the average the average is going to be 45 million and the answer will be 2.91 2.91%. Once again, um uh, I know you're going to say well this is easier said than done. Yes. As as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not a uh, for the weak-hearted <laughs> individual, but this is the point. The point is to make you strong in dealing with those CPA simulation. Uh this this is the whole purpose of it. So the key is stay calm. Stay calm know where to look for the information and notice when i looked at just the whole point of this is when i was looking at general administrative you could have you you could you could be you could be you could have been spinning your spinning your wheel so i just skipped over r and d because i saw the r and d and within the r and d i find out i need to i need to find out there is something wrong with the r and d which has allowed me to do the reclassification so just kind of sometime skip over something come back later don't panic always look for the additional information and the key is knowledge the key is knowledge if you don't know fob shipping fob destination that's it a simple concept you will get the simulation all wrong because you could not adjust revenues properly if you don't know what discontinued operation is and discontinued operation is reported net of tax you'll get this one wrong those are the two key to this simulation uh, if you don't know how to compute your interest expense you should not be taking the cpa exam that's another key factor and the most important one and the least amount that the students familiar with is know how to read general ledger because no college course i mean i do teach it farhat lectures teach it but no college course show you how to read the general ledger for a company you know in my courses when i teach financial accounting i show you how to read the general ledger which is and also how to read the special ledgers so that's why the key here is to know how to read those otherwise uh, just it's difficult because this is a real if you're a cpa when I was in practice, you had to do this. This is part of your daily routine. And that's why somebody who's been in practice for two to three years, this will be an easy simulation. Bring it on for you. Practice, practice, practice. I'm always here for you. Look at additional simulations. Uh, of course, uh, look at Farhat lectures. Look at additional resources. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.